um, on the topic called the spiritual Sabbath of a Christian believer. Uh, the spiritual Sabbath of a Christian uh, believer uh, and that was based from uh, Hebrews chapter 4 verses 1 to 11 and we are just quoting some I mean taking some of the verses from uh, Hebrews chapter 3 also so uh, chapter 3 and chapter 4 that talks about the uh, different I mean kinds of Sabbaths of people of Israel and how it is connected uh, to I mean every one of us as the New Testament believers so uh, we were talking about uh, mainly two points last week about the Old Testament Sabbath observation and how uh, the people of Israel were observing serving the Sabbath and we have been going through two points like uh, from Hebrews chapter uh, 4 verse 4 we read that the personal Sabbath of the Lord God in Genesis uh, chapter 2 it was after completing uh, his creation work and he rested on the seventh day so that was the one uh, point that we have been uh, discussing and also uh, the, the, the second one is I mean uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 4 uh, verse 9 uh, uh, we uh, see there about the national uh, Sabbath uh, uh, observation of people of Israel, uh, which is uh, mentioned in, uh, in 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 the book of Exodus. Uh, that is uh, related to the Ten Commandments. That is related to the Ten Commandments. You know, uh, uh, we we saw that. Uh, why um, God was giving uh, these kinds of uh, uh, commandments and these kinds of observations to the people of Israel and there was there were there were many reasons for that and uh, I mean they were supposed to obey the commandments of God and the people of Israel uh, they were supposed to be I mean subdued by the the, the the commandments of God and they were supposed to obey all those things I mean so I mean we understand when God is giving uh, the commandments and uh, some observations to the people of Israel, uh, uh, what is the connection with those things? With, I mean, with with the, with the people of God today and the New Testament people, New Testament believers. So that is the reason that I mean, I have been talking about uh, from that point. And today uh, I will do uh, do the continuation of uh, that same message. And last week, uh, when I was concluding the message, I said that uh, a Sabbath was a day of worship by concentration and consecration, right? You know, Sabbath um, for the people of Israel was a day, a particular day, which is given for the people of Israel as a, as a worship day and also as a concentration and a consecration. That means free from all works and be consecrated in the presence of God, focusing on worshiping God. Consecration means sanctification or set apart or separated for for the for the for the purpose of God and being away from all kinds of the works of this world and activities and everything and separating a day for worshiping God and spending time with God that was the I mean purpose of uh, I mean observing the the Sabbath day uh, for the people of Israel so we are thinking again about I mean how we can connect those things with the New Testament believers I mean, you know I mean, uh, I, I don't know how many of you know about uh, the concept of synagogue in the in the Old Testament time or in the New Testament time also. During the time of Jesus and during the time of the the apostles of Jesus, we know that there was a system of uh, I mean a synagogue. Okay, and uh, we will think about uh, I mean that now that you know uh, uh, that the people of Israel they had a they had a I mean temple, and we know that it was destroyed, and again it was rebuilt okay so they had a temple in jerusalem but they lost it when because of the many captivities and because of the i mean i mean capturing and uh, uh, attack from the the other enemies you know uh, they lost their temple and they had no temple to gather together and to do the sacrifices in those days and until AD 70 the jewish people had a temple but we know that nero the roman empire he destroyed the temple in AD 70 so then the Jewish people, they made the synagogues in different places and that was for a prayer meeting or a worshipping or reading scripture on the Sabbath day. Okay, so synagogue in Malayalam it is written, Palli. Okay, every day Palli in the Ghana, Palli in the Bible, 
synagogues are the synagogues which was made by the people of Israel you know uh, the system of uh, uh, the, the synagogue was not uh, uh, actually given by God you know uh, you know after the destruction of the temple the Jerusalem temple when I, I believe that when those people on that day the Jewish people they only originated and they only just I mean established the synagogues in different places to worship God and to have a prayer meeting or reading uh, the, the Old Testament scriptures and understanding the meaning of those things I mean so that is called the synagogue or in Malayalam it is Pali okay so we know that Jesus sometimes went to this Pali okay Jesus also sometimes went to the synagogue and we know that I mean Jesus was going there and he was reading the book of Isaiah in the synagogue and also Apostle Paul some other I mean apostles also they used to visit the synagogue to preach there to share the gospel there and to have the prayer meeting in that that area that's the reason many of the people heard the bible heard about the jesus and have heard about um, i mean the gospel and all those i mean doctrines and everything because these i mean uh, apostles were going to the synagogues in different places I mean, wherever they are going you know the people were searching for a synagogue because they were thinking, the persons were searching for a synagogue and they were thinking, okay, if we could be there, I can preach the gospel there, I can present about Jesus into that place, the people, those who are gathering in that area. As not only the Jewish people are gathering in the, in the synagogue, but the Gentile people also were gathering in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, I mean, uh, 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 synagogue during the time of the Sabbath day. So, we have to understand that, you know, uh, you know, when we think about that, I mean, Sabbath day or uh, the, 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 the synagogue, I mean concept of the Old Testament and the New Testament because you know we know that uh, I believe that after the Old Testament time only or after the destruction of the temple only this concept has came. Okay, the, the, the concept of synagogue because they didn't have any temple. They didn't have any temple. So they were seeking for worshipping God. How to worship God? Without a, without a, I mean, construction, without a building, I mean, it was not easy to gather together. So they were, I mean, sometimes the people of God, the New Testament believers, the apostles, and they were gathering in a house or under the tree or in a hut or somewhere. At the same time, most of the time, I mean, they were seeking for a synagogue to go there and to have a fellowship there. And also they can share the gospel and the word of God into those people. So now, we have to understand one thing, you know, this is the time that we are gathering together, okay? So we don't have a synagogue now, but we have a church today, right? We have a church, and we have a congregation, and we have a gathering, the people of God, I mean, they are having the fellowship together. This is a wonderful opportunity that God has given to the people of God to gather together. Hallelujah! That means, we are not supposed to, I mean, neglect the church meetings hallelujah when when god is giving a day for us when when god is giving the opportunity for the people of god to gather together to have the fellowship to listen to the word of god to pray to worship i mean whatever it may be you know what we whatever we are doing hallelujah i believe that this is a chance for the people of god this is an opportunity for the people of god and we are supposed to utilize that so whenever it may be, when God is giving that opportunity, that's the reason that I mean we are reading in 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 the in the in the New Testament that the people of God they were gathering together in the synagogue. I mean now today we are turning into the other dimension of the Sabbath. Okay, and there is rest. Yes. Okay. So we are, I mean now turning into the next dimension of the sabbath so i've been i've been uh, uh, discussing or i've been preaching about many things about the sabbath day of the people of israel the jewish people i mean how they were gathering together and how i mean in the old testament they were observing the sabbath and what they were doing on that day and all those things that i mean already we have been discussing now we are coming to the next one that is rest you know we know that god was giving commandments to the people of israel and they were supposed to obli I mean, they were obligated to obey those commands. Amen? And God said to those people that the, the commandments that I am giving you, if you are obeying the commandments, you will be blessed. You will be blessed and you will receive any blessing from the Lord. 
but at the same time if you, you disobey or if you I mean, neglect the commandments of God you are going to be defeated and you are going to be destroyed and if you are rebelled against God and you will be defeated into many nations we understand the people of Israel many times they were defeated they were destroyed and they were going they they had been going to the another nations maybe babylon or uh, i mean egypt or some other places I mean, because of their rebellion because of, of their i mean i mean uh, uh, disobedience hallelujah and you know i mean uh, they disobeyed the, the 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 commandment of god and they rebelled against uh, i mean god and his leaders I mean the god has an i mean anointed and appointed the leaders for the people of israel but the people of israel they were always rebelling against the leaders and also against god and that's the reason they were restless and they became defeated and they were scattered and wandering into different places men you know that god himself was the king for the people of israel once you remember that point right god himself was leading them controlling them giving them the commandments and giving them all the rules and regulations and everything and god himself was the king for the people of israel once but at the same time now they started to ask to god or god we need a king we need a king and they were asking for a king and god allowed and permitted to have a king that was king saul we know that that the people of israel they were expecting and they were thinking if the kings are coming if the kings are controlling us if the kings are reigning us and if there is somebody to lead us and those people those leaders or those kings will lead us into the promised land of canaan we are coming to the point okay so they were expecting for a rest they were expecting to have a time of blessing a time of comfort and they were thinking okay if the leaders are coming if the kings are coming into the reign then those leaders can lead us to and to a and to a peaceful situation because they were scattered you know the people of israel jewish people they were scattered they were wandering i mean in in different places and they were, were defeated i mean they had no hope in their life but we understand these people were expecting for a king and the saul came and saul was a failure he cannot he could not i mean bring them into the promised land and again david came solomon came rehoboam came and during the time of the reign of of rehoboam the kingdom was divided into two which was that the judah and the israel southern kingdom and northern kingdom then judah had many i mean kings over there and israel also had many kings but the point is even though the people of israel the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom solomon david merhobayam and uh, what is that saul when all these people were ruling over the people of israel they could not find their rest or comfort in their life hallelujah and there are many reasons because all the leaders all the kings of this world are human they cannot give a complete rest for the people but we understand when the lord jesus christ is ready to give the complete rest for the people of god today we are coming to the point hallelujah and you know when the people of israel were defeated you know many times many times the people of israel were captured by the enemies and they were defeated by the enemies when they had gone into the captivity of different places in different nations men the people of israel they were going for the captivity or exile period you will get it from i mean that point yeah it's there you know the captivities of i mean egyptian captivity assyrian captivity babylonian captivity roman captivity you know that during the time of roman captivity jesus christ was here and jesus christ was living in this world during the time of the roman captivity okay so most of the time 
when the people of israel were going for the captivity we understand only because of their rebellion because of their i mean disobedience they were going for the captivity the enemies are coming there and destroying the jerusalem temple destroying the jerusalem city and doing all kinds of things because of the disobedience of the people of israel disobey and rebellion of the people of i mean israel and it is clear that i mean the roman the, the, the jewish people were under the control and the reign of the roman empire during the time of jesus christ that's the reason that jesus christ was arrested and jesus christ was killed or crucified by the roman emperor or roman empire okay so that's the reason that we are thinking about that and at the same time you know even though they had many 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 i mean leaders when god was i mean i mean ascending some of the leaders to the people of israel and these leaders i mean i mean uh, and, and those people the people of israel they were thinking okay these leaders whom i mean god is sending to us i mean they may i mean lead us into the promised land they were expecting that also okay ivare ivare adutot aichirikkuna ee leaders oru pakshe endu yum ഈ ഐ മീൻ ആ വാക്തൃത്വ ദേശത്തേക്ക് ഈ ജനത്തെ കൊണ്ടുപോകുമെന്ന് അവർ പലപ്പോഴും പ്രതീക്ഷിച്ചു പക്ഷെ അത് സംഭവിച്ചില്ല എസ്പെഷ്യലി റിമെമ്പർ യുനോ മോസസ് ഓക്കെ സോ മോസസ് വെൻ വാസ് ദ പേഴ്സൺ uh uh who uh, whom that uh, god allowed and god i mean i mean appointed uh, to to lead these people into the promised land you know even though he was a great leader he could not reach to the promised land you know the story you know when 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 god was saying to uh, when when the people of israel were thirsty in the wilderness you know there was no water to drink at the same time when god said to moses you do one thing you speak to the rock okay god said moses why you are afraid about all these things and why you are worried about all these things you do one thing you speak to the rock men but what did uh, i mean moses did eh he struck the the rock i mean it's sure that the water came out of the rock the water came out of the rock but at the same time god said you disobeyed my commandment my commandment was hmm just speak to the rock speak to the rock when the water will come but he struck it but at the same time water came that was right at the same time moses could not lead the people of israel into the promised land even he could not go into the promised land moses could not enter into the promised land hallelujah there comes the need of jesus christ who is the real leader of the people hallelujah so this is the point that i would like to share with you this morning you know when all the leaders are failure when all the kings are failure we understand our lord jesus christ only can give the perfect rest to the people of god those who are trusting in the almighty god hallelujah even the people of israel were expecting hallelujah for a messiah to come you know the people of israel the old testament people they were expecting for a messiah who was that messiah jesus christ right you know they were expecting that the messiah would come and the messiah will i mean regather every one of us because those i mean people of israel were scattered to many other nations and in different places they were in captivity in different places so they were expecting okay if jesus is coming if messiah is coming and if messiah is coming as a king or a leader or a political leader then i mean i mean that messiah could uh, I mean, bring all of us together and uh, regather all of us together into jerusalem and uh, that messiah is going to rule over us I mean, that was the expectation of the people of israel but that did not happen messiah came that was jesus christ but the people of israel they could not understand this is messiah what happened was the bible says that i mean i mean he came to his own people but they rejected him right then they did not mind him they they they, they rejected him i mean so that's the reason that that i mean i mean that rock or that stone became a blessing for the gentile people like you and me 
This is a great privilege that God has given for the people of God that we are enjoying today. We are I mean, clapping our hands today. We are I mean, singing together. We are worshipping God. I mean, we are gathering together, having the fellowship and reading Bible, preaching the gospel, preaching the word of God. We are doing all these things only because of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Even the people of Israel, Jewish people, they could not accept this Messiah or Jesus as their Messiah. But we got that chance and we got that opportunity opportunity to, to, to come together in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And you know, unfortunately the people of Israel they could not recognize Jesus but Jesus came as a savior and the Lord not as a political leader. This is important to understand. You know, the people of Israel, they were expecting Jesus as a political leader. You know, if they have a political leader, okay, so Jesus is coming as a political but you, you know about the, the birth of Jesus Christ. The birth of Jesus Christ and life of Jesus Christ. You know, after the birth, when these people, the, peop people uh, the, the Jewish people, they were just watching over Jesus and they are thinking, okay, if this is the king, then how it could be the birth of Jesus in this manner? You know, Jesus was not born into a richest family of that country. But he was born into a poorest family of that country, the carpenter's house. You know, so the people of Israel, they were expecting a political leader to lead them. Or political leader one, you know, we understand, I mean, Jesus came, I mean, as a, as a, as a savior and as a, a deliverer and as a, I mean, savior to, to, to save the, the sinners of this world. Hallelujah. So this is a privilege that God has given us uh, to, to come to the presence of God and to worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, I mean, let us think about a few things about the, the Canaan rest of the people of Israel and how it is connected to the real rest of the New Testament, I mean, believers. Okay, the next uh, slide I'll be. So, the Canaan rest is, I mean, a, 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 I mean, entirely different from the national rest of the people of Israel. We'll come to that point. The Canaan rest and the national rest or national uh, <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so what is the difference between the, the national Sabbath day of the of the people of Israel and also the Canaan rest? You will understand from these points. Okay, so the Sabbath day for the people of Israel, they were supposed to be silent. They were supposed to be taking rest, I mean, free from all kinds of activities and being there and taking rest. Okay, but this is different. The Canaan rest is after reaching into the promised land, they were expecting, they were, I mean, knowing that after reaching to the promised land, we are getting the real rest from the Lord. And they were expecting that Moses could reach us into the promised land. It did not happen. Then Joshua, I mean, Joshua, through Joshua, God led all these people into the promised land. I mean, so when you th I mean, think about those things, we will understand in, the, in uh, uh, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, Apostle Paul is trying to explain how we can connect the New Testament people, New Testament believers into the Canaan rest of the people of I mean, Israel. So in, in chapter 3 and 4 of book of Hebrews, I mean, Paul is explaining many things. There are many things, okay, the like, uh, you know, how these people were, I mean, coming into the promised land of Canaan and also how the people, uh, uh, I mean, saw how many of the people could not enter into the, king, into the promised land and how, I mean, Moses, I mean, could not reach all those people into the, into the, I mean, promised land of Canaan. All those things are written and mentioned in the, I mean, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. Okay, so when we think about the Canaan rest of the people of Israel, you can understand what is the background of these chapters. Okay, the background of these chapters, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, is the exodus of Israel from Egypt and their different experiences in the wilderness. Okay, so there is no uh, time to read all those I mean, chapters today. You know, we are not, we are not, we haven't uh, read any, any words today, right? We'll read. Okay. So, uh, I was just explaining all those things. So, we'll come to the point. Amen. So, when we come to the point, we'll read one verse. Okay. So, 
Okay, it's okay. Time is there. Enough time is there. No problem. So, think about I mean, Hebrews chapter 3 and 4. You know, in, in, in Hebrews chapter 3 and 4, we will understand what is the background of those chapters. The background is the people, the, the, the exodus of the people of Israel from Egypt. Okay? They left Egypt and now they are in the wilderness experience. Okay? So, in the wilderness experience, even though they left Egypt, you know, they were expecting that, okay, within few days we will be in in Canaan, in the promised land. You know, the, the, the Bible scholars and geophysical studies and uh, they say that, okay, it is only needed 11 days or less than 2 weeks to reach to the Canaan from Egypt. By walk. By walk. Eh? But they took 40 years. We are coming to the point. Listen, you know, they are saying that okay, it's only only 11 days or less than 2 weeks is enough to reach to the Canaan from Egypt. But they took 40 years. Hmm? Listen, you know, he is trying to connect that event of the wilderness experience of the people of Israel with, with the New Testament believers, how we are and what we are doing now and where we are now. Okay. You know, Apostle Paul in the in the book of Hebrews, he is trying to say that the people of Israel, they were so happy when they heard that, okay, you are going to be delivered from the place of place of Egypt. Egypt they were wandering into the into the into the wilderness for 40 years. Hallelujah. Praise God. And we have to understand Paul is trying to tell us and teach us some kind of I mean spiritual lessons out of the out of the I mean wilderness uh, 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 I mean uh, experience of the people of Israel and he is connecting the Egyptian captivity of Israel with the sinners bondage in this world as an illustration as an illustration I mean so we understand you know they had to face many other I mean hindrances in their lives and also same time I mean Apostle Paul in the book of Hebrews he is trying to connect I mean the, the people of Israel and their bondage or their 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 wandering in the wilderness with the bondages of the sinners in this world. I mean, you know, uh, maybe read uh, maybe Colossians chapter one verses thirteen and fourteen. Colossians chapter one verses thirteen and fourteen. Yeah. <coughs> Colossians chapter 1 verse 13 and 14. Bible on the latter guy. Brought us into the kingdom of his son. Hmm. From where? From the dominion of the darkness into the kingdom of his son. Then, yeah. In whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sin. Verse 14 also. Yeah. yeah. Listen, you know, this is what Apostle Paul is trying to connect with the people of Israel and the New Testament believers. You know, once we were under the darkness, right? Once we were under the, I mean, when bondages of this world, I mean, the captivity, under the captivity, we were sinners and we were under the uh, uh, captivity of the bondage, of, uh, sorry, bondage of the, of the sin and Satan and the world. I mean, but by the blood of Jesus Christ, by the blood of Jesus Christ, and we know that the Israel was delivered by the blood of the Lamb, which was slaughtered in uh, among them. At the same time, we are delivered by the blood of Jesus Christ, which was shed on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah! You know, it was not God's will to will for them to to remain in Egypt or in the wilderness. I mean, His desire was that the people should 
enter the glorious inheritance, inheritance of Canaan. Listen, you know, the thing is, you know, God was desiring about the people of Israel that they should not be in Egypt and they should not remain in the wilderness. But God was saying, you are supposed to be in the promised land. You are supposed to be in the promised land. But they could not reach. All of them could not reach. All the leaders could not reach to the Canaan. Because of their rebellion. Because of their I mean, disobedience. Hallelujah. And But God was saying that you all must be, I mean, get into the incurrence of the, the, the promised Canaan. Promised land of Canaan. Now, you know, when we go to Hebrews chapter 4 verse 8. 4 verse 8. When there, the author of the, of the book of Hebrews, he is reminding us that what the Canaan rest of the Israel, what was the speciality and what they could understand, what they could, I mean, experience in their lives in the in the canon okay so remember when before entering into the promised land the wilderness journey was there okay so we have come to that point you know before entering into the promised land they they were supposed to wander i mean they were supposed to wander i mean in the in the wilderness for 40 years and it was, I mean, easy for them to reach to the Canaan, but God made it when possible by 40 years. So God was thinking, okay, if these people are, you know, God would have, I mean, taken them from Egypt to, to, to Canaan within, within a second or so. Because God is a miraculous God, right? God is a miracle God and God can bring all these people into Canaan within one second. Okay? With a word. With a word. Let all these people come to Canaan, that's enough. This, because God, I mean, created everything with a word. word. Let it be, let it be, let it be. Okay, so he could uh, say that, okay, let all these people in, be in Canaan. Okay, so, but God did not do that. Because God was expecting that these people must get a maturity and these people must get into the promised land after a preparation. After a preparation. Amen. So God wanted to teach them many things. And we know that on the way they had to fight with their enemies. And they had to defeat the enemies. Hallelujah. So God was allowing them to fight with the enemies. It was not easy for them to reach to Canaan. God said you will have to fight with your enemies. And you will have to get victory over those enemies. And you have to defeat many nations and many enemies on the way. You know that on the way when uh, the people of Israel were uh, uh, traveling uh, in the wilderness, we understand that uh, I mean uh, they had you know, some of the nations and some of the countries and some of the uh, kings. They were saying, no, 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 you cannot pass through this way. They were not giving the passage for the people of Israel to travel through through their nation, and they they were saying, no, no, you cannot come this way. You have to go to another way. This is our place. Eh? You cannot pass through this. I mean passage. But then, I mean, God said to the, the leaders, the Moses and all those, I mean, Joshua and all those leaders, that, I mean, you are going to go through that way only. Because I'm going to do the miracle for you. You will be going through that road only. Because, I mean, I'm going to defeat your enemies and you will go through that way. And in that way, they reached to the place. Hallelujah. At the same time, even though God was with them, they were facing many hindrances they were facing many I mean, troubles in their lives you know this is the i mean i mean important thing that we have to understand even though god's presence is with the people of god we will have to face many challenges in our in our life we will have to face many i mean difficult situations and uh, the, the the painful situation in our life at the same time we believe that god's presence is with us when god will reach us into the promised land of canaan and god is taking us into the resting place and peaceful face and, and that is the expectation of the people of god I mean, so what are the things that they they had to i mean face in their life when they had to cross many things. When they had to cross the, 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 the Red Sea. And also they had to I mean, cross the, I mean, uh, the, the river of Jordan. And the situation, tough situation. That mode was, I mean, even, even sometimes you know, Moses was not knowing how to handle the problems. Hmm? Moses was know, not knowing how to handle the problems. Okay, but even then, God's presence was there. The experiences of not drinking water. Experience of Mara. The bitter experience of their life. I mean, they were not knowing how to get the water. But God provided. That's true. God provided. But they had to go through that 
experiences the experience of the wilderness men the experience of crossing crossing the jordan river experience of crossing the red sea experience of the provision and the protection of god when god provided the food for them god provided the manna for them god provided the water for them and they were experiencing the presence of god as a pillar of cloud and as a pillar of fire hallelujah, hallelujah. can you can you i mean thank god for everything hallelujah praise the lord so they were having many hindrances on the way they were going through the tough situation they were facing many other troubles in their lives at the same time i mean same time god was providing the manna god was providing the water god was providing the food and they were i mean, I mean enjoying the blessing of the of the of the pillar of cloud i mean pillar of fire hallelujah there, there was nothing lacking in their life because god's presence was with them and his leaders were leading them <coughs> and also we understand you know the wilderness experience they they were not i mean supposed to i mean avoid the wilderness experience in the life they were supposed to go through that I mean, because god allowed them because in deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 let's read that verse i mean uh, deuteronomy chapter 8 verse 2 i mean uh, it is very clearly written that why god was leading these people i mean through the the wilderness to I me mean. remember how the lord your god led you all the way into the wilderness those 40 years mm. to humble and test you mm. in order to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commandments was i believe that yeah i believe that it was it was essential for those people to get the maturity man before entering into the promise lamb and of, and of canaan okay chumma avare kondu poi aa canaan desh tot ettu kaynale avaru nannagathil nindu devathan ariyam adond endu edu 40 varsham ningal ivada kadana karangiittu poya mari endu parannu alle so endinarnu devam avare karakke nu ariyam adu avare prathyech ezhuthittunde remember how the lord your god led you all the way in the desert these 40 years to humble yourselves and to test you to know what was in your heart whether or not you would keep his commandments this is very important point to understand every one of us those who are sitting here men when god is leading you and me into a different place or different situation painful situation when god wanted to know that whether you will humble yourselves and i mean whether i mean god is testing you and whether god wanted to know what is in your heart i mean nammude hrudayathil okke irikkunna endakke aanu nallada porathottu varanam nundengil endo cheyanam ഈ ബിൽഡേർണസിൽ കൂടെ നമ്മളെ നടത്തിയേ പറ്റത്തുള്ളൂ അല്ലെ ചില ആൾക്കാരെയൊക്കെ ചില പ്രയാസത്തിലൂടെ ദൈവം നടത്തുന്ന ഉടനെ അമ്മൻ അവരാരാന്നുള്ള നമുക്ക് മനസ്സിലാകും എന്താണെന്നറിയാമോ അമ്മൻ അവരുടെ വായിരിക്കുന്നതെല്ലാം പുറത്ത് വരും അവർ ഹൃദയത്തിൽ ഇരിക്കുന്നവരെ പുറത്ത് വരും എന്താ കാര്യം എന്നറിയാമോ അവൻ ഇച്ചിരി പ്രയാസം ഉണ്ടാകുന്ന ഉടനെ ദൈവത്തെയും കുറ്റം പറയും പാസ്റ്റയും കുറ്റം പറയും അമ്മൻ കൂടെയുള്ള വിശ്വാസികളെയും കുറ്റം പറയും ഇതൊക്കെ സംഭവിക്കുന്ന കാര്യമാണ് എന്താ ഏ അതുകൊണ്ടാണ് ദൈവം പറഞ്ഞത് ഞാൻ നിങ്ങൾ എന്ത് ചെയ്യാൻ പോവാണ് ഈ ബിൽഡേർണസിലൂടെ നിങ്ങളെ യാത്ര ചെയ്യിപ്പിക്കാൻ പോവുകയാണ് സോ ഗോഡ് വാസ് ഇൻഡൻഡ് ടു ടു ഐ മീൻ ലീ these people i mean through the wilderness because god was thinking okay let everything what is in the heart of the people of israel let it come out let it come out I mean let me know that whether they will humble themselves hallelujah my dear families my dear brothers and sisters this is a wonderful chance and opportunity for the people of god that god has given this opportunity to humble ourselves hallelujah let everything what is there in the, in the heart of a people let it come out i mean let us prove that we are serving you lord let us prove that lord we are i mean getting prepared oh lord we are getting prepared to reach to the promised land the, the real promised land of god hallelujah that's what uh, we are understanding from there and you know actually the wilderness experience is an essential for every christian today I men so we know that i mean uh, there are many people uh, going through the wilderness experience in the bible even in the new testament you know you know any, anybody in in the new testament those who went to the wilderness paul did paul did then john jesus ah okay there are many people 
they were going through the i mean uh, uh, experience of the wilderness as as you said the lord jesus christ was led by the spirit okay it was not i mean uh, preparing him okay so i mean uh, the, the spirit of the lord i mean led him into led jesus into the wilderness it was not to prepare himself for it was not to i mean uh, give him maturity or something right but it was led by the spirit with a, another purpose with an another purpose and after the i mean 40 days of fasting and uh, 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 yeah, fasting you know jesus was led into the desert you know we have to think about you know when god is leading some of the people into the wilderness experience of situation when I mean, there you will have to learn many things i mean there are many lessons that you are going to learn from that experience i mean apostle paul had been into the wilderness experience and david had been into the wilderness experience experience moses had been into the i mean wilderness i mean experience and he was leading the people of israel through the edge of the promised land had prior deep and lasting trials in the wilderness during his 40 years of exile uh, from egypt hallelujah and we know that there were many leaders for the people of israel like you know i mean uh, uh, through i mean through through moses and aaron in we know that uh, moses and aaron they could not reach to the uh, the, the the promised land of Canaan, but Joshua came, and Joshua was leading all these people into the I mean a uh, 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 promised land of Canaan. But the the thing is, you know, as we are the believers, as we are the New Testament people, you know, what is the present rest of a believer now? Okay, the people of Israel they were expecting the promised land only up to that that place. Okay, the people of Israel they were expecting okay promised land Canaan is our promised land and that is the place of rest. They were expecting all those things, but we are where we are now and we where we are going to now the heading towards. Man, the present rest of a believer, you know, when we are accepting Jesus as a personal savior. Then Jesus will enter into the spiritual rest in our heart and we are entering into a spiritual rest. That's what we read in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30. Yeah, read that verse. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28, 29 and 30. Yeah. Yeah, we'll close with Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, mm. and I will give you rest. Mm. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Hallelujah. And Praise God. This is the this is the rest that we are experiencing today. Hallelujah. So in 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 in, in one side we are still we are now in the promised land. Amen. Because we are in Christ now. That's the reason that when when we accepted Jesus as a personal savior, I mean we enter into the spiritual experience of the rest. Amen. The spiritual experience of the rest. Amen. So the promised land, Canaan, represents today as our spiritual inheritance in Christ. Hallelujah. So we have the spiritual inheritance in Christ today. And even in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 also we read that, Blessed be the God and Father of the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. Where we are now. Where we are here. Eh? We are in the church but where we are now spiritually. We are seated in the spiritual or heavenly places how many of you believe that you and me are seated in the heavenly places today already it is done it is not written you will be seated in the heavenly places but it is it is written it is already done that means you are now seated in the heavenly places Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 we read that at and present we are seated in the heavenly places with Christ and already we are experiencing the spiritual blessing from the Lord because we are in Christ today Amen. hallelujah hallelujah it is possible to be seated in the heavenly places since we are still on this earth is it possible is it possible we know that we are on the earth but same time we are seated in the heavenly places you and me, we have something to 
think about and let us i mean glad let's be glad and let's be happy enjoy in the presence of god because you are not even even though you are in the on the earth when you are seated in the I mean, holy places and the heavenly places hallelujah and it's a spiritual experience not a literal heaven but we understand it's a spiritual experience hallelujah and it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a sign of victory and triumph it's a sign of overcoming it's a sign of authority and it's a sign of our position hallelujah so we have this position we have this opportunity to be the children of god and to be in christ and we are experiencing that rest hallelujah let's all we stand together in the presence of god let's enjoy that presence of god this morning today hallelujah i i, I was just I mean, explaining all the things about the sabbath day and uh, and uh, the rest of the the people of israel the 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 the, 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 the i mean a national rest of the people of israel and also the the canaan rest of the people of israel the reason is when we have to understand apostle paul in the book of i mean hebrews he's trying to tell us he's trying to teach us that you and me are now in this rest hallelujah Praise God. I mean, sometimes, you know, the people are saying that, okay, uh, we are expecting a promised land of Canaan in future, after our death or after, after the, 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 we will think about maybe, maybe later. Okay. After the death or after the second coming of Jesus Christ, we are expecting the heaven as the promised land. The heaven is not the promised land. Okay. Heaven is not the, literally, heaven is, the, is not the promised land for us because, you know, there was battle, there was war in the promised land of Canaan. But in heaven, there is no war. There is no war. There is no battle in heaven. We will be so happy with the Lord in heaven. But now, we understand we have this opportunity. Let's all cross our eyes in the presence of God for a, for a moment. Let's pray together. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Master. Just remember, when many other things are there to remember. Hallelujah. We are in a wilderness journey. Hallelujah. But we are provided all what we need. Hallelujah. We are spiritually seated in the heavenly places. Hallelujah. We found rest in Christ and we are victorious. We are in the battlefield but given the spiritual full armor of God. Amen. Hallelujah. We are overcoming today. We are blessed with all the spiritual blessings things in heaven hallelujah what a great privilege that god has given for every one of us as we accepted jesus as a personal savior hallelujah what a great privilege it is hallelujah to accept jesus as a personal savior we are finding i mean when we are worshiping god when we are reading bible when we are praying when we are gathering together we are experiencing that rest in our christian life hallelujah because you and me are in christ today in christ today hallelujah this world is a restless world hallelujah there will be painful situation there will be tough situation there will be issues there will be troubles and problems in this world there will be a kind of experience of the wilderness in our lives hallelujah but god says that i am with you i will not leave you hallelujah i will come and help you and i will support you and i'll protect you Hallelujah. Remember about I mean, what are the provisions that God has given us. Hallelujah. Even though we are traveling through the wilderness experience. Hallelujah. Even though we are going through the tough situation, painful situation in our life. Hallelujah. God is helping us. God is providing us. And God is protecting us everything. Hallelujah. So let us all submit ourselves in the mighty hand of God. And let's pray together. Hallelujah.